That was good for good introduction. So we're, on, we're live now. So great. Do you want to just give a little intro to what we did last week? What we did last week. I, actually, you know, I'm just going to forget last week okay. because what we're going to do now is we're going to actually start working on a project tonight. If you want, there's going to be a little review of the data and what what biological data looks like, what the problem looks like, and and after that, we're going to break into groups and to actually try to process some of the data with a little bit of Python. So. Um, Hopefully everybody can install BioPython. I think probably like three or four people will have that. BioPython site is having difficulty. You can install it with like easy install or any of the other typical yeah. installers. Yeah, you couldn't even get to install. Uh, no, yeah, no. I, I use like apt get to install mine. So I, uh, it, but you know, if you can't, well, we'll talk afterwards. That's good. Hey, is BioPython actually separate from Python? Yeah, BioPython's a, a library from oh, Python. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to try to bore. I'm, I, I can't really open my mouth without boring half the room. Like, what is he talking about? So I'm going to um, I'm going to try to like. Hopefully, when we get into groups and there's programmers and biologists together and other anybody else who wants to participate, hopefully you, you can ask those people your questions and get a lot more direct uh, help from them. And I'll wander around and filling any gaps. That's, that's kind of my strategy. But uh, like I was uh, like I was. You know, just saying before, like, I don't really know what we're doing. Uh, we, we, this has kind of never been done before. So we're going to try to, so like, just creep through this and just see how it works. So uh, what I've got is I've got a collaboration with a, a biology project. And so this is a real thing, real some real science, for those of you who care about that. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to be working to design, and this will all be open source. We're going to create an open source project, open source software to analyze Arabidopsis thaliana to design some bio parts. And then we're going to put them public domain. Uh, and I'm going to ask everybody to, everybody who is around enough and contributes enough, um, and I don't know what the cutoff is, because again, I have no idea what we're exactly doing, how things can work out. We're going to publish a paper. <laughs> and uh, we're going to um, gonna get the parts tested. And so they're going to be validated in the wet lab. If people really want to do that, depending on the size, everybody. I think everybody will get a chance to participate in that as well, unless the group swells to double the size or something. But we'll see. So, so all those. That's that's the that's the hopefully a motivation to be here to do this. I'm gonna ask that people come back like every other week, just to sort of like get things going. I'm gonna have another one next Sunday. And then every other week from then on, you know, holiday, moving around for holidays and stuff. Nobody has to come every time. Uh, we'll try to do a Google Meetup so people can get in remotely, all that kind of stuff. Uh, please ask me questions and, you know, try to help me uh, figure out what I should be doing about this. So I'm just going to start off talking about Arachidopsis. A lot of people already know about it here. It's the most, uh, it's the most common genetic model for plants. Um, it's a tiny little weed. The reason people like it, uh, there's a couple, I actually don't know all the history of Arachidopsis. Somebody knows. Please jump in. But basically, it's a small weed that was being studied in the southeast United States, um, and it was later discovered that it has one of the smallest genomes for a plant known. For a plant that does everything, it has roots, it has flowers, it has leaves, it has stems. You know, it, 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 it does all the regular things a plant does, but it has only 135 megabase. So 135 million nucleotides. So the DNA is made of A, T, Cs, and Gs. It's only got 135 million of those letters. Human beings have 5 billion of those. So that's really small. Most plants have as much or more DNA than we do, I think. Right? So, uh, that, so it's kind of, it's kind of become even more popular than it was before as, as, a, uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a minimal model for plants. But it's also a very quick breeder. So like in tw two or three weeks, you get a new generation of plants and they go to seed. So that, all those things are kind of valuable. Uh, so some of the germane facts about the Raptopsis tonight is it's got only five chromosomes, and it's got uh, two other chromosomes called, from, from each of the organelles called the chloroplast and the mitochondria. So the chloroplast is where uh, photosynthesis happens and lights get transduced into energy um, and sugars, and, and, and actually carbon is mixed in as well. And the mitochondria, which actually all multicellular organisms have, including plants and animals, as well as a bunch of single cell ones, mitochondria are where ATP gets generated, and that's the common currency for energy in biology. Okay, but uh, but I'm just going to go. Sorry, I'm going to go really fast. But the chloroplasts and mitochondria are captured bacteria. They're actually almost separate organisms that were 
co-opted into the eukaryotic cell, I don't know, almost a trillion years ago. And so, um, does anybody know about approximately when that happened? It had to be a long time. <laughs> used to know. It was like, I had it on my calendar, but I lost it when I got into the phone. So, uh, so they actually have slightly different versions of the genetic code, and that's going to be relevant to our conversation tonight. They actually have their own, I, I almost hate to say this, they have their own ribosomes. <laughs> and people are saying, like, what is a ribosome? Well, we'll get to that later. Okay. So I'm just going to, uh, so in my experience teaching at BioCurious, what I've decided is that doing is the best way to learn. So we're going to cover, like, little sprinkles of, like, a whole semester of molecular biology this week, tonight. And then every week we're going to sprinkle in a little bit more until the picture starts to settle out. Um, and the reason I'm sort of picking the way I am, and again, if people hate it, you have to tell me what you hate about it so we can fix it. But um, what we're going to do is I'm only going to give you the information we need to manipulate the information we're going to manipulate tonight. And we're going to look at some data, and we're going to play with it. And then all the other stuff should come clear. So uh, everybody knows, who, who has never heard of the central dogma of biology? Good. All right, so everybody knows that DNA... <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you anyway, right? So the DNA is four kinds of letters, and this is like a very small segment, it's about 25 base pairs or letters from a genome of 135 million. There's A, 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 C, G, A, T, A, A, T, G, blah, blah, blah. And A, T, G is in blue for a good reason, but I'll tell you about that later. And then DNA, that's in the chromosome, that's in the DNA, and the DNA gets copied to RNA, and, and the T's are replaced by U's in that process. As actually, if you see, I did that. And then the RNA is actually a free-floating single molecule, and it's relatively short. It just contains one gene, whatever that means. There is no definition for a gene, really. And then there by another pro so that's transcription, and then by another process called translation, at some point from the so-called start codon, which is in blue, you have a translation into protein. Junk, junk, junk. And the protein is actually what does all the chemical work in the cell, usually. <laughs> I mean, I, there's almost, you can really never say never in biology, so I apologize if I'm sounding vague. Okay, so I'm going to um, play a movie. Oops. So I'm going to play a movie. Just, uh, just to... Let's see. Good. This is actually a nice video, and it just takes three minutes to to uh, sort of show, give you an idea of what happens. Um, and it, pictures are worth a thousand words. It's four minutes long. So Yeah, that's fine, Google. So the red stuff is, a, is actually the double helix of DNA. And they, they sort of tell the, um, tell the RNA polymerase, the copies of DNA to RNA. Oh, this isn't going to work. Oh, on it. They, they're telling the, 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 the RNA polymerase that, hey, there's a gene here. It's gonna Question: is, is this an animation, or are we seeing this is a, a oh no, photo. it's way too small for a real picture. Like, yeah. uh, 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 yeah, it is a little bit way down. Yeah. Yeah. 